Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be looking at the basics of electricity, which is part of the electricity topic in GCSE Combined Science. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding the key definitions for electricity. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the definition of current and potential difference, link resistance into the concepts of current and potential difference, and calculate values of current, PD, and resistance in an electrical circuit, which falls into the following part of the GCSE Combined Science Specification for Electricity, where we're going to look at current, and then current, resistance, and potential difference. Now we can start understanding electricity by considering a metal. So let's consider the inside of a metal wire such as copper. Now metal wires are full of free electrons. Free electrons are electrons which are not bound to any nucleus or an ion. So as a result, the greater the amount of free electrons, the better an electrical conductor a material is. Now electrons are small particles and have a negative charge. They're about 2000 times smaller than protons and neutrons and they're negative charged. Now if a material does not have any free electrons it can't conduct electricity so we call it an insulator. Now a, now a charge is a fundamental property of a material like colour is. Now you can't actually imagine and visualise charge only the behaviour that it causes. Now electricity or electrical energy is the kinetic energy of electrons moving in a particular direction. So electricity in metal wires occurs when the free electrons in the metallic structure are all moving in the same direction. Now charge is the property of the electron or any particle which allows it to move in a current. If an object has an overall charge it can be moved in a current. So electrons are negatively charged so therefore can be moved in a current. Now we measure charge in coulombs. Now you can notice that metal ions and electrons are charged so it can carry a current but the metal ions don't move in a current because they're much larger than the electron and so would need much more force to be moved. Now, as the electrons have a negative charge, it means the electrons can move in a current. Now, like we said before, protons and positively, positively charged metal ions could also move in currents, but the force needed to do so is too large to achieve at room temperature because the particles are so big. Now, we can place a potential difference through a wire which can make the electrons want to move in a particular direction. So a potential difference can be provided by a battery or a power pack or the main supply. So a potential difference is placing a positive charge at one end of the conductor and a negative charge at the other end of the conductor. Now the electrons will want to move to the opposite charge, which is a positive, and move away from the same charge, a negative. So a potential difference will cause the electrons to move in the same direction. Now for an electrical current to flow through a closed circuit, the circuit must include a source of potential difference. A potential difference causes the current to flow when there is a complete circuit. So the potential difference is the ability for the free electrons to do work, which is when that, those charges move in a circuit. So it's, it's the amount of work done per unit charge in the circuit. So the potential difference is the energy needed or work done to move the charged particles, in most cases electrons, in a current per unit charge. Now the potential difference can be provided by a battery or a power source. So the potential difference can cause the free electrons in the copper wire to move in a current and this makes the wire an electrical energy store. The electrical current is making the energy change stores. So a battery can act as a store of potential difference or a power pack or mains can act as a source of potential difference. Now the value of the mains potential difference is 230 volts which is a value you should memorize. Now current is the movement or flow of electrons around the circuit. The more electrons that flow the larger the current. The quicker the electrons flow, the larger the current. Now the potential difference in a wire will make the electrons move, but this will only happen when the wire is part of a full circuit. The negative electrons want to move to the positive charge, and so they all move in that particular direction. However, when the free electrons, or any charged particles, move around a circuit, they'll hit the metal ions that make up the metal wire, and this stops the free electrons moving as quickly and producing a current. 
current. Now this effect is called resistance. So the metal wire will also have metal atoms or ions in the wire as well as electrons. The electrons will collide with the metal atoms and the electrons slow down. So the electrons knock into the metal ions and slow down. This lowers the current and this is resistance. So the more blocking of the free electrons moving, the more the resistance. And there are many ways we can do this, such as increasing the number of metal ions, making the metal ions vibrate more, or decreasing the space between the metal ions. Now, when the free electrons will hit the actual metal ions, that will cause them to slow down, and you see this idea of resistance. So we can summarize these concepts with the following picture. The charge, in this case the electron, is the quantity that moves in the wire. The current measures how the charge moves through the material. The potential difference measures the energy needed to move the charge in the material, and the resistance measures the difficulty the charge having flowing in a material. Now, the higher the resistance, the lower the current as the charge finds it more difficult to move. The higher the resistance, the higher the potential difference as more energy is needed to move the charge through the material. So just to clarify again, current is the movement or flow of electrons around the circuit. The more the electrons flow, the larger the current. The quicker the electrons flow, the larger the current. And we measure this current in amps or amperes. Now the negative electrons want to move to the positive charge, so all move in that particular direction. So a potential difference across a complete circuit will cause a current to flow. So it will cause electrons to flow in the same direction in the circuit. So the current measures how quickly the electrons move in the circuit. It's the rate in which the electrons move in the circuit. But the electrons only move due to their charge because they're attracted to the positive end of that particular conductor. So as we know the current is the rate in which the charge will move in the circuit, we can give the equation for current with the following uh, values. Current in amps is equal to charge in coulombs divided by time in seconds. So like we said before, current is measured in amps or amperes, charge is measured in coulombs, and time is measured in seconds, which is always the case in physics. Now current is the same in any part of a series circuit. The electrons do not speed up, they do not slow down in a wire. Now current will split when it encounters a junction, and the electrons will split equally about which path to take. Now you've got to memorize the equation, current is equal to charge over time. That's a very important equation you must memorize. Now for electrical charge to flow through a closed circuit, the circuit must include a source of potential difference. Now a source of potential difference causes an imbalance of charge to be found in a conductor or an electrical circuit. So examples of potential different sources include the batteries and the main supply. Now another name for potential difference is voltage. So you may sometimes hear in the real world some people refer to potential difference as voltage. Now, a potential difference will cause a current to flow in a circuit. So we can actually just write our equation for potential difference as the following. Potential difference is the work done per charge to move charge around an electrical circuit. So potential difference is equal to work done divided by charge. So potential difference across the circuit is measured in volts. The work done carried out by the charges or the electrons is measured in joules and the charge being moved around the electrical circuit is measured in coulombs. Now the potential difference can be considered the driving force pushing the charge, the electrons, around the circuit. Now the potential difference in a closed loop of electrical circuit has an overall value of zero. What this means is the potential difference put into the circuit equals the potential difference out of the circuit. And this is because energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed in a circuit, it can only be transferred. Now the current through a component depends on both the resistance of the component and the potential difference across the component. This is because the potential difference provides the energy to drive the electrons, the charge, around the circuit. And it's also because the resistance of the circuit provides an impedance to prevent the electrons, the charge, moving around the circuit. So we can link the values together with the following equation. Potential difference is equal to current times by resistance. So the potential difference across the electrical circuit is measured in volts, the current through the circuit is measured in amps, and the resistance the electrical circuit has is measured in ohms. Now we can symbolize this with our equation V equals IR, where V is the potential difference, I is the current, and R is the resistance. Now the greater the resistance of the component, the smaller the current for a given potential difference across the component.
component. And the lower the resistance of the component, the higher the, the current for a given potential difference across the component. So let's just summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson. So, electricity is the kinetic energy of electrons moving in the same direction. Current is the rate of flow of electrons in a circuit and is measured in amps. The potential difference is the work done to electrons per charge to make them move in a current, and this is measured in volts. Resistance is the impedance of electrons moving in a current, which is caused by collisions between the electrons and the metal ions of the conductor, and is measured in ohms. And finally, the charge is the property of subatomic particles that allows them to move in a current, which is measured in coulombs. So, so, for electrical charge to flow through a closed circuit, the circuit must contain a source of potential difference. Electrical current is the flow of electric charge. The size of the current is the rate of flow of electrical charge. Charge flow, current and time are linked by the equation Q, charge flow, is equal to current I times by time T. Now, a current has the same value at any point in a single closed loop. Now, the current through a component depends on both the resistance of the component and the potential difference across the component. The greater the resistance of the component, the smaller the current for a given potential difference across the component. Now current potential difference and resistance can be calculated using the equation potential difference V equals I current times by resistance R, where potential difference is given in volts, current is given in amps, and R is given in ohms. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the definition of current and potential difference, link the resistance into concepts of current and potential difference, and calculate values of current, potential difference, and resistance in an electrical circuit. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the basics of electricity, which is part of the GCSE combined science topic of electricity. Thank you very much for listening, and have a lovely day.